One of the things that Flash can be used to do is create some basic animations. In animating, it is called tweening, in that there are keyframes, and in between the keyframes, the object needs to change or be animated. So in between, tweening. There are two different kinds of animation or tweening. There are motion tweens and there are shape tweens. In a motion tween, we start and end with the same object. And the object must also be a symbol or grouped. In a shape tween, the object that we start with is different from the object that we end with. And those cannot be symbols. They can start out as symbols, but then we would have to break them apart or we'd create and ungroup them. Let me show you. All right, so I've got this layer and I have an empty keyframe and I'm going to create an object and I want to do that as a symbol. Uh, if I were not doing it uh, directly as a symbol, I could convert it later on. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to call it rectangle. I'm going to leave it as a graphic type and I am in my symbol editor. So let me go ahead and create that rectangle. And that's all I really need for now. It could be any object that I'm going to uh, do a motion tween on. But a motion tween is a change in position, in scale, rotation, skew, any of those kinds of items. But we end, basically, and start with the same object. So let me go ahead and go back to that library because I need to bring this in to my stage. The keyframe is now filled. And I'm going to go ahead and tween that. If I take and come down onto the object, right click, create motion tween, it will automatically give me some frames. And I can change the duration of my tween by clicking and holding on the end of the last frame and dragging it to whatever location I wish. Now I need to position this to where I want to make a change. So let's say I'm simply going to make it start in one location and end in another location. So I would need to be positioned at my ending frame. I take, click and hold on my object and move it to my new location. You'll see that here is my starting location. Each one of these dots represents a frame and here's my ending location. It also added a keyframe to this position. Now if I take, click and hold and scrub across the timeline, you'll see that this plays back just as you would expect. We created the beginning object in the first keyframe. We um, positioned it in my last keyframe and it created all the frames in between those two keyframes. Now I could also make other changes to that. If I position at this keyframe right here and I go into my transform, I could do any kind of transform that I want. If I pick my transform tool I could take and I could scale this and so if I now scrub across here it not only changes position it also changes size. I could also change its rotation so not only does it change position, size, but also rotation. Now I can make other changes. I do not have simply have to be limited to a total of two keyframes. If I want to make some other key change or need additional keyframes, position at that location, come down to your image and simply select what you want, whether it's a new position, new rotation, whatever it may be. You can also, it's a little bit easier sometimes if you grab a hold of the registration point because then you will see the path and if again we scrub you'll see that it follows that path, changes to position, scale, and rotation. Starting and ending with basically the same object, that object being an instance from a symbol in the library. Now when this plays back in real time, uh, it will play at a certain speed because of my frames per second, and I can adjust how fast things are moving by controlling the number of frames that are being used. Let me show you. So I'm going to go to control. I'm going to do test movie and there's the speed that will be playing back. If that's too fast what I need to do is add additional frame. So I can come out here, I can drag this longer, the proportional spacing between the frames has remained the same. I'm going to go to control, test movie 
and you'll see now that the relative speed is much slower than it was previously because I've given it more time, more frames, to do the same thing. All right, I'm going to temporarily hide or make invisible this layer while I go into creating a shape tween. I'm going to create a new layer and let me actually go back to my original layer here and we'll just call this one motion so that we know that was the motion tween and I'm going to name this one shape for the shape tween. Again, I have an empty keyframe with empty frames, so there's no content at all. So we see nothing because I have my other layer invisible. And I'm going to go ahead and add some content. Now remember that with a shape tween, we start and end with a different object. So I'm going to go ahead and just, and it could be anything. I could start with text. I could start with a graphic. I could go from text to different text, from a shape to a different shape, shape to text, whatever combination I would want. I'm going to go from let's do shape to shape. So I'm on that first keyframe. Let me draw my shape. Let's say that I then want to do a shape tween to that location. So I need a keyframe there. That is not a keyframe. So I'm going to do function F6 that adds another keyframe. It also took the content that was in that frame and duplicated it. So I have the rectangle there and the rectangle there. So for a shape tween, that wouldn't be very useful because we're starting and ending with the same object. So I want to pick this ending keyframe. What's in it is now selected, noted by the dots. I'm simply going to hit delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. I now have an empty frame. So now I have my rectangle in all of these frames, but right now I have nothing in this one. So I want to make sure now I've got that one selected. Let's just change it to an oval and we'll pick a different color. It didn't have to be, but I will in this case. So right now I have the rectangle from frame one all the way to that frame there, 66. And then in 67, I have my oval or my circle. So now I need to apply my shape tween. So I'm going to go in between and then do create shape tween. If everything works correctly, you'll see that it changes color and I get a solid arrow. If you end up with a broken arrow, you have a mistake, more than likely the object is grouped or a symbol or an instance of a symbol. You would need to break it apart. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. But now you'll see that it is tweening or morphing, changing not only in shape, position, but also in color. So it changes from one shape to another shape. All right, let me go ahead and hide that one. I'm going to add another layer. This time we'll do a shape tween between text and a shape. So let's go ahead and create that shape on that first one. I need a keyframe someplace. I'm going to put it at the end in this case. And let me get rid of the content because right now I have that circle in both keyframes. So I'm going to select that one and delete it. Pick my text tool and type in, let's type in media. Now with text, text is automatically grouped. It's not broken apart. You can tell that because when it's selected, it is not noted with the dots. So we need to break text apart in order to be able to use it for a shape tween. To do that, I believe it's under, it's command B, and that's what I'll use. It's someplace in the menu. Uh, there it is, break apart. If it is a multi-letter combination, like media is, it will break it apart into individual letters. And then I would need to break it apart in order to actually break it into that graphic image. So I'm going to do command B, note now. It is made up of the dots, indicating that it actually is broken all the way apart. All right, so I'm going to position in between my keyframes. I'm going to right click, create shape tween. I get the solid arrow. So now it will go from that shape to the other shape, which happens to be letters. Now remember, we can take, and with a shape tween, we can have changes in position as well. So that's our shape tween, going from a shape which is a graphic shape to text. 
All right. Let's also do a shape tween where we're going from text to text. So once again, pick the first keyframe, put in there what you want. We'll say multi for our first one. Let me reposition it. Go to your other location, function F6, put in another keyframe. We will want it to delete what's in there. Put in something else in its place. I'm going to type media. And in both cases here, both for media and multi, they are still grouped. So we need to break those. So I'm going to do Command B, individual letters, Command B again to break it all the way down. Go to media, Command B to break it apart in individual letters, Command B again to break it all the way down. Click in between, right click, create shape tween. So now, since the M's the same, that part's not really going to be morphing, but the other part does. And I could be very careful as to where these words are placed so that really the M does not move, none of the letters move, they simply morph from one letter to the other letter. Okay, that concludes on how to do basic motion and shape tweens in Flash.